The Video Creator Show is brought to you by VidChops.com, an editing service that helps take the burden of editing off your back. Check out VidChops.com to see how you can save yourself tons of time and energy while taking your YouTube channel to the next level. Today, I am speaking with Debbie Williams, a board-certified nutritionist and holistic practitioner. Uh, but instead of me rambling on, uh, Debbie, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody what you're about, what your YouTube channel is all about. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am Debbie Williams. Um, I am a board-certified holistic nutritionist. My goal, I would say that I'm a problem, problem solver. Most of us have health issues. And many people only recently are realizing that their diet and nutrition have, has a lot to do with the issues and problems that they have. So I am that person that is going to bring to you ways of how to become healthy naturally through natural remedies, through, I would say, a lot of old school ways. Um, I've been a, a holistic practitioner now for over a decade, and it's been an amazing experience for me to help thousands of people get off of medications for diabetes and high blood pressure, help their gut, uh, build up their immune system. Um, just so many different health issues has been resolved just by changing your diet. So that's my goal as being that one person to be the problem solver for your health with nutrition. Beautiful. So when you decided to start this channel, uh, like clearly you have a lot of real world experience helping people through this. Um, like how long did it take you from uh, becoming a certified nutritionist and kind of having clients and patients to then starting your YouTube channel and putting this information online? How, how long was that? Well, to be honest with you, let me share a little bit of my story. Um, I sure. started out actually, I had a YouTube channel over 10 years ago. I started out as a hairstylist with a hair salon in Atlanta, Georgia. And within my salon, I was seeing people who were coming in that was dealing with hair loss problems. And back then, 10, 15 years ago, I would say, please go see your doctor and or please go see your dermatologist because there's some some I see bald spots forming and people would go, every client would go and they'd come back and say, Debbie, I went to the doctor. The doctor says I'm fine. And that disturbed me because I would say, yeah, there's something going on with your body. So that led me to take matters into my own hands. So that's how my journey took me from being a stylist behind the chair to started studying trichology to at one point thinking that I wanted to be a Western medicine doctor, only realizing that I didn't want to treat symptoms and write prescription drugs. And it led me into my journey of naturopathic health. So so to, add, so to answer your question on how did my channel start, my channel started with me sharing hairstyles and sharing ways to grow your hair health, in, a, in a healthy environment. And once I learned from my journey of trichology to um, naturopathic care, I learned that our hair loss problems, 95% of it is due to nutritional issues. So I kind of reinvented myself, Grant. I decided that, okay, the hair loss space is a there's a need because most people who are experiencing hair loss they're buying topical products lotion potions and creams and no one is telling them that hey stop looking at the top to try to fix the problem let's look on the inside so i re reinvented myself reinvented my whole industry to to help people understand if you want to grow your hair you got to change your diet so that's how the channel began it, it was a channel that i had for hair products and hair styling and then it just beautifully transformed into this health and wellness um, channel that it is today. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wow. So you like once you started making this shift, um, like how can you walk us through that shift a, a bit more in detail? So you, you had a channel where you were mostly focused on just kind of hair, hair products, things like that. Uh, then you start shifting more into health. Um, like, was there any big decisions you had to make there? Like, was there any challenges you had to deal with in kind of changing your channel's content? Because I know for a lot of people, uh, when they decide to make a big change with their channel like that, uh, it can be a little daunting. It can be a little complicated. Uh, what was there, like, what was going through your head and kind of how, how did you make that shift specifically? Amazingly, the shift came so natural. So it wasn't that I was like, okay, uh, what am I going to do? Most of these people know me for hair styling and, and hair products. 
it was just a slow transition. So what I did with my channel with the majority of my audience were people that was looking for hair resolutions. I just basically started implementing nutrition. I started talking about health and what I saw was the audience was really listening. I, the comments, the, the questions, the emails, they were just coming in at, at a, a, a level that I had to hire someone to help me even answer these questions. And that's when I said, okay, there is a need for this. There, there is a demand for people and it's with people of all cultures. So it just wasn't an audience that was really, you know, dealing with, I would say black hair. We need to start all over. All right, we got to stop for a second. This dog has to go. Why is this dog in here? I thought this one was out. The other one was, get out. Please take them in the basement or somewhere. I'm sorry. We got to do that over. Because I don't know if you could hear her. She was flipping it and flapping it and doing all kind of stuff in the background. So now oh, yeah. I'm going to need you to ask that question again so that, because I know you're going to edit this. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so, well... Sure, we, we could just start by uh, asking the question. So, making that transition from hair to health, uh, a lot of people, uh, when they have a YouTube channel, they feel they're tired of doing one thing and they want to do another, or they feel more inspired to do another thing. Uh, so, what challenges did you face trying to make this transition, and uh, what steps did you go through in order to make it happen? So for me, the, the transition was really smooth. Um, when I thought about how am I going to transition, it just happened. The same audience that I had, I just felt that they needed to know more. And I needed, what I was sharing with them was, hey, listen, I know you're losing your hair, but here's the issue. Your hair is not the problem. Your hair is the symptom. And what I started seeing was, people started really listening. They started tuning in. My, my channel started growing just because I started still talking about health and I'm, um, excuse me, still talking about hair, but now I added in health, a topic that they weren't hearing connecting together. So the audience, it just grew and not with it. So I, I wasn't that person where I sat back and said, okay, hmm, how am I going to change this channel? Should I make a new channel? Should I start with a new audience? I just felt this audience that I had, which at the time we're going back a decade, I had a nice size audience for, for a person who I didn't pay for advertisements or anything. I just felt this audience needs to hear that you don't need to go and buy a whole bunch of hair products because hair loss is just a symptom. It's not the problem itself and it's your health. It's, it's your diet. It's your deficiencies. And from the stories that I told, people were just sharing my channel. They were sharing my channel. And the next thing I know, my channel was growing and growing and I was getting emails and messages. And I had to eventually have to hire someone because I couldn't answer everyone's comment. I couldn't answer everyone's email. And that's when I saw it. there was a need for this. This was something that was in demand. And it was funny because at the time I was getting emails from Africa. I was getting emails from Egypt. I was getting emails from, um, all over the world, India. And that let me know this is a worldwide thing, hair loss, because that, that was my topic of discussion back then. This was a worldwide topic. It affected everyone, every culture, every nation. And this is how I started to grow because when I would talk and always anything I shared, I researched it. It was resourced. Uh, it was never just me blabbing on, on social media, my own personal thoughts. And I always would tell people, please research everything that I'm telling you. And I think maybe they did. And I started saying that, hey, this lady, she knows what she's talking about. So for me, my transition was so smooth, Grant. It just, it just happened. And the more I would speak about hair loss, the more questions I would get. So what I did was I would take those questions that people were asking and I would make them into a video. And so that would just grow the audience more because now I'm answering the needs of what they were asking for. So that's how the channel really just took off. Mm -hmm. So uh, clearly you're really engaged with your, your audience mm -hmm. and you are, you're getting emails from them. You're seeing comments. Is your main way of interacting with your audience through email and comments? Yes. 
I comment, I try to comment to everyone. Um, and, and I had to learn for myself the trolls because I had, in the beginning, I had a few trolls. And yeah. I'm, I'm very sensitive at some point, but I'm also a New Yorker, by the way. And if you know anything about New Yorkers, we tend, they, we have this hard exterior. But when I would get a troll that said something negative, I'd get upset. And I'd be like, mm. why would they say that to me? Or why would they say that about me? But then I finally realized you're going to have, you're going to have some negativity out there. Um, so it just, you know, I just really took everything and just built off of that. And st I still am to this day. Every comment I will try to answer. I have a team now. So if there's things that I can't get to, they will or in reverse, because my team has been trained so well, a lot of the answers, they know how to answer. But there may be something that somebody may ask that they're like, uh, I can't answer this one. So I personally will get in there and answer. And I find that that communication of me talking with them has really helped my channel grow too. So if someone's trying to grow a, tra a channel, you have to answer your comments. You've got to talk to your audience. These are the people that you want to get to know, trust, and love you. Well, if you're speaking to them, they're, they're, to you, it's like you see them and they see you. And that's what helps people love you more because it's like she, she's, she noticed me. you know. And so that's what, why I make sure that I try to comment to everyone. And, and I have several channels. So picture a TikTok, uh, uh, Instagram, a uh, Facebook, a uh, YouTube, every one of them, we're answering everyone. So I have to take certain days where, where there's days where we're just like, okay, today, guys, all we're doing is answering questions. We're answering comments. <clears throat> wow. That's, uh, I think the fact that you are this far into YouTube and you still are answering most comments mm -hmm. and reading all of them, uh, I, I think that's, uh, a very unique situation and it clearly is working very well for you. Um, I, I totally agree with what you said that you do need to be engaged with your audience and making sure you understand what they want. And uh, like having that conversation is very important. You know, when uh, a lot of people are starting channels or trying to build them, I think they, they kind of want to stand on a soapbox and just sort of talk. Yeah. But what they don't realize is there's a lot of people out there and the people that you are trying to reach, you can actually talk to them directly. Um, so did you ever feel like there was a confusion of like uh, giving the audience what they want versus what you wanted to talk about? Um, or was it, was it pretty natural? Like uh, they were just asking questions and you were just answering them. In my On my channel and my audience, everything is just so natural. I've never had anything that I felt was challenging. Now, I a lot of people will ask me sometimes very in-depth health questions. And and I know I am a holistic practitioner and, and most of uh, everyone who's in the holistic space, we stay in our place. So certain things I will say, I'm going to need you to talk to your doctor about this mm -hmm. one. You know, so um, I will have the conversation, but I will also, if it's something that I feel that's above me and I may feel that I really have a great answer, but I know that because I'm not a medical doctor, I need to stay in my place. I'm a holistic practitioner and I appreciate that more actually, because I feel the things that we do to help people recover and, and get better. It's, it's natural. I, we use food as medicine, you know? So, um, so yeah, it's just stay in my place. So I've never had anything that I felt like, Oh my God, how do I, how do I deal with this? It, it's just, my audience was always, oh, but I'm not going to say was, or is always people who they're looking for ways to either help their hair grow back, which most of them, but hair loss is a symptom of a health problem. So the majority of my audience are people who are dealing with weight gain, hair loss, fatigue, inflammation, uh, gut issues. And, and most of my topics now are, are really explaining to them that all of the things, your skin problems, your hair problems, it has a lot to do with your liver, your kidneys, and your gut. So most of, that's what most of my conversations are about. Mm -hmm. hmm. So once you started building this audience, uh, I, I know you have a website, askdebbieaboutthair.com. You have, uh, there's also hairandscalpmeds.com where you have a blog. Uh, could, could you talk about your websites and kind of like how you've been able to drive traffic to them, how you built them. Uh, I, I think this is a very important part of having a, a successful YouTube channel, you know, um, 
if you're able to get your audience uh, watching your channel, of course, that's very important. But I think the next step for a lot of people is always kind of uh, getting them interested in something off of YouTube. So in this case, this is a website. I know you have products on there. Um, can, you, can you talk about how you, you built these and uh, kind of how you've made them succeed? So Grant, I will share with you, my story is very unique. And when I do share this story, it's a little different. Everything that I've done in my business has been organic. That's unique. And I know that. And so when I say organic, I have, I was not the person that spent a lot of money on ads. Um, I have, I was not the person that whether it's YouTube ads or Facebook ads. And I, you know, I'm not going to say, I, I don't believe in luck. That's not a word that I even use, but my channel grew organically. What I think was different with me and everyone who's starting a channel, I would say you have to be able to, when you start your channel, you are fulfilling a need. If you just randomly figure, I want to be on YouTube and I want to be a star, you still have to fulfill a need to succeed. And in my situation, I guess the time that I jumped into this space, I was fulfilling a need. So it allowed me to grow organically. Not too many people can say that, but if you are building a channel, you have to have, you have to fulfill it. There has to be a need for it. It has to be something that people are looking for that they want. Cause if it's not a need or a want, then it, your channel is not going to grow. Even in the space of being funny, um, you know, say if a person, they're a comedian and, and you, you, you just want to have a channel where it's just laughter. That's, there's a need, you know, if you're doing silly and funny things, cause I see so many channels like that, that I watch and I laugh and it's like, Oh, they're so silly. It's so funny. You know, you just have to fill that need, but you have to know that there is a need for it. So to answer your question, I'm a little different from how I kind of built the channel because it was organic. It was definitely organic. Now, if I was to start anew today with something different, I probably wouldn't go as far organically, um, as I have, but just so happened when I started to where I started then to where I am today, it's still 98% organic. And my, I remember on YouTube when they sent me a, um, and it was years ago when I made over a hundred thousand subscribers and they, they send you a plaque. And I, you know, I was like, wow, they sent me a plaque. This is exciting. And again, I, everything was, I didn't pay for any advertisements. I was just out there putting out information that there was a need for, and people were sharing it and people were showing it to other people and the channel just grew. Mm -hmm. So like your, your channel, clearly there was a lot of organic growth and you were kind of just uh, filling a need, as you said, but as far as like your, your website, I was wondering, like, it, it's a very professional looking site. Uh, you sell a lot of products on here. Um, like, do you have any advice for starting a website? Like, uh, I, did you pay a web designer? Did you just use Squarespace? Um, like what, uh, I was just wondering if you could walk us through okay. kind of the, the nitty gritty of, of the, getting, of getting, uh, getting that up and running. Okay. So what I've done and I'm that type of person. And I think anybody that, that start a business, you need to be, you need to get your feet wet. So I started building websites myself. I taught myself. I didn't have a lot of money. I knew that I, at the time, you know, when I was asking people, how much would you charge to do a, a website for me and the numbers that they were talking, I was like, I got to feed my family. I can't do this. So I've always been that type of person. If I can't afford to have someone do it, then I'll just teach myself. Um, and in my case, I did that. But in this case, um, the, the steps involved is one finding there, there's a, you can build your own website or you can use, there's so many different ways that you can get a website that's reasonable. But again, it's about quality. I find that a person, you don't have to spend a lot of money to succeed in this, in whatever space you want to. Yes, you do need a website like myself. I, I found these little, um, videos that taught me how to build a website. I'm not that brilliant. Like when I was building website, it wasn't a lot of coding. Um, so, you know, and I did learn coding, but the time that I learned coding every year, the codes would change. And after a while I said, I can't keep up. I can't do it anymore. Now I'm going to have to pay someone, but you, you're needing to get your, you need a website and you need to find someone and you can go to Fiverr and find someone to, to 
create a website for you pretty reasonable a place that I use for a lot of my designers my editors I actually go to online jobs what is it online jobs ph.com in the Philippines I have a whole staff that I love they've been with me now for seven and eight years if you treat your if you treat your staff nice they will stay with you and so you can go to I do a lot of things overseas where the it's not as, as expensive as me trying to find somebody here in the United States to get a lot of my graphics done a lot of my editing done um, uh, my copywriting most of my copywriting I have done myself but I've gotten so busy to the point that there are times that I need to hire a copywriter and I'll go to some place like Upwork and I'll you know look for a few copywriters and I'll see their work and I'll ask for them to give me some samples I'll give them a task I'll say okay um, tell me I, I want to see you write an article about uh, kidney disease and and I'll say that because I want to see where the information is coming from and they know that I I have copyscaped so I'll know if you just copied from another site but there are so many different platforms where you can do things on a budget so one set a budget for yourself and stay within that budget and if you set a budget and stay within that budget you can get everything you need but most people I want them to don't not to think that they can get all this done in a few weeks time this is over time of it the website that you see now has been changed probably about eight or nine times and every few months I will change it because when the when Google and the algorithm when they see that your site is still the same then they're like okay maybe no one's really looking at this site so you got to change the site up so you can keep up with the algorithm so they can see there's new stuff here traffic is being sent here this site is doing well so those are little things that I still do to this day but you can start an e-commerce store a website all these things under a thousand dollars in this day and age mm -hmm. right on so uh, with all the products that you sell on this site, um, do you actively pitch them in your videos? So I, I, yeah, I'm i guessing there's more of an organic feel uh, to mm -hmm. when you talk about your products. Like you're, you're not like, uh, the, this video is sponsored by this thing that I'm selling. Uh, you right. know, it's um, like, can you talk about how you talk about your products on your channel? Okay. So I don't, and no one likes a salesman. You know, one likes to be sold to. And most of the time when I'm, when I'm talking about a product of mine, I will bring the product in most of the time, not as the main topic. One, I will bring a topic around the product and then maybe bring the product in like, well, this is one of my products and this is what the benefit and the features are of, of this product. But I will not, I, me personally, I don't like being salesy. I'm, I'm not going to come and say, hey, this is my shampoo. It's so great. Buy this. And <laughs> I won't do it that way. I will talk about the benefits. So for instance, I have a aloe vera shampoo and conditioner. Al and why did I choose to make a product that has aloe vera in it? Because one, aloe vera is one of the most incredible, incredible um natural plants on this earth. It helps everything internally, externally, all of that. And because it's 90% um, hydration in water, it does wonderful for all te textures of hair and even skin. So I may bring up a topic that we're talking about maybe dehydration, or I may be talking about acne, or I may be talking about scalp problems, and then I'll bring in, so, you know, aloe vera is really good, and I actually have an aloe vera shampoo and conditioner, and these are the things that I have it in, and here's why I've developed it. I, I don't believe that our shampoo and conditioner should have chemicals, and I'll list all the chemicals. So I will not come out and start selling right out the gate. I will bring, I will talk about the need of the audience and then I will bring in the product and how the product fits that need or can fill that need. Mm -hmm. That Which is very smart because uh, one thing I always like to tell people is you want to give people value before you start asking Absolutely. for something. You know, if an audience feels like you have given them something and you have given them something consistently that has been helpful, then they're going to be willing to, uh, you know, buy your products or support you in whatever way that you need to be supported or want to be supported. And that is super important. You know, yes. it's, it's more of a, a trade in a way, you know, yes, you're giving one thing and then your audience at some point may decide to give you another thing. 
and that is kind of a, a mutually beneficial relationship and uh, th this is something that is is really key you know um some you know i i talk to some people who you know they want me to help them build a youtube channel but they don't necessarily understand that um right. uh, they're trying to stand on stand on their soapbox they're trying to just make as much money as possible as soon as possible but they're not really uh respecting their audience and they're not giving them something before um hoping that their audience will give something back right um so i i think you you clearly got a good uh mind for for this whole thing i i agree i you know the other thing that is very important when a person is starting a channel or starting a business is planning you have to plan it out. And the best way to plan it out actually is to take a look at other YouTube channels. Take a look at what others are doing. Look at their comments. See what others are asking in those in their comments. And when you take a look at a, another YouTube channel, look at one that's comparable or comparable to what you're wanting to do. You want to look at that space and see what's the need in the space and what are the questions being asked and answered in that space. That will help you when you are trying to build your channel because you really do have to look at your competition. Um, there was a time when I didn't think that I needed to look at competition. I was like, I don't need to look at competition. But if you're willing to, when your business gets to a point where you need to scale and grow, yes, now you got to look at the competitor, look what, what they're doing. And when you're, and, and all you're doing is looking. I don't believe in looking and taking what they're doing. You want to see that, okay, commend them on what they're doing and go, okay, I'm going to add a little twist to that. This is what I'm going to do differently because you can already see that what they're doing is working. And that's how business grow. It's not like in reinventing the wheel. You actually want to take what's working and make it better for you. And when you do that, then you can succeed and you can call it your own. It's my style uh, and, and you can grow from that. And I've watched... Like if I, in my space of, I'll say in looking at YouTube channels when it's in regards to hair, I have seen so many young ladies grow beautifully in their channels. I, I remember when they started and I'm like, wow, look at them now. Yes. You know, they, their, their numbers have grown. They're doing well. Um, and, and that's what you want to do. You want to kind of look and see what everyone's doing and commend the ones that, that are doing well. So for an example, in 2017, I thought that I would put out a video sharing with people the importance of how to grow their hair, because that's always a number one topic people would say to me. How do I grow my hair? How do I grow my hair? How do I get rid of this bald spot? Men, women, it wouldn't matter. So I thought that I would share a technique that I was using in my clinic, my hair clinic, where I was using, I was fermenting rice, and I was, and once the rice ferment, I would actually apply it to our clients because at the time I was also still working in the salon and I watched hair I watched people who would literally had bald spots hair would grow so I thought I need to share this my staff said why would you share this your salon is doing amazingly well with people flying from all over the country for your hair treatments why would you tell people about this rice water and I just felt because I wanted to and I saw how hair loss affects everyone it wouldn't matter who you are. When you start losing your hair, it takes away your confidence level. It takes away your self-esteem. I've seen the depression. So I said, if I can share with people a free way to grow their hair, I, I'm going to do it. So I put this video out in 2017. The video went viral. The video went viral to the point where today it might be at seven or eight million, but I was the first person to put out a rice water video. I had gotten a lot of trolls that was like, that sounds stupid. Rice and water can't grow hair. And I would respond to the comment and I would say, well, try it and see, or maybe you need to read these other comments of people who is, is working. To this day, Grant, there are hundreds and thousands of videos now on YouTube who followed me in the rice water and saw how the, it has grown the hair. There are shampoos on the market for rice water. There, and I'm like, wow, and this trend I started. And I love, I love it. It was free, but it, it brought me such an audience. When people started using the rice water and started seeing that it was growing their hair, that's how they became to know, like, and trust me. Because I, one, I gave you something for free, and you went and you tried it, and it worked. So I, I think rice water has a lot to do with where I am today, 
from most of the people who followed me back then and was like, listen, I would watch your videos. You would do these certain treatments and I did it and my hair started growing and I started eating the way you suggest and now I'm sleeping better. And so I believe in show showing because if, if you do and you see the results are coming true to you, now I got a, I have a fan for life. And that fan mm -hmm. will be that same person that will buy anything that I say, listen, I got a new product. You want to try it? Well, they trust me. So they'll buy it. So that's how my business, that's, that's where the organic has come into play through, through the years of me just giving away knowledge, giving away information for free. So if anybody's trying to create a channel, you got to give a little, you know, whatever you give, you get it back tenfold. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And did you actually see less people coming to your salon or did you see more? Because yeah. people were warning you like they're, they're going to stop showing up, but you're, you're shaking your head kind of seems like it didn't, it, you didn't shoot yourself in the foot at all. No. All you did was actually help yourself by sharing this information and helping other people. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. That's exactly what happened. We got to a point where I couldn't take any more customers. I could, I, I was like, I'm, I'm booked up for the next year or two guys. I'm sorry. I, I can't take anybody else. And that's when I decided that I really, and it was around the time I wanted to get from behind the chair anyway. And I said, nutrition is where we are leading into. And I need to share with the world about healthy eating because I would see so many people that wasn't eating well and they wind up with diabetes and high blood pressure. And they're like, well, I don't know how I got this. And I'm going, Okay, let's sit down and talk about your eating. That that's that's where it happened. So yeah, so that's why I say for me, it, the transition was just so smooth and easy. It went from talking about hair loss to saying, "Hey, your hair loss is because of your diet." Let's talk about your health. Mm -hmm. And I I think it's amazing that the transition was so smooth and that you were so willing to share this information. And, and the reason I say that is, um, I think. There, there's definitely some people out there where if they were in your position, they would have just kind of kept the rice water thing a secret and kept the salon thing going. Yep. Um, but I, I think when you do something like that, when you're kind of purposely withholding information uh, or you're kind of like trying to manipulate the, the landscape of things to keep you sitting on your pile of gold or whatever, yeah. uh, you can kind of end up being like paranoid and to like, I don't know, you're trying to manipulate people in a way. I agree. Um, but instead of doing that, you did this more natural and kind of easygoing thing. And uh, I think if, if people are in a situation where you were in back then, um, they can like, I, I would invite them to look within themselves and kind of think, okay, how would it feel to keep doing this and to keep holding on to this and sort of just keeping this secret, um, versus sharing it with people and kind of building something new because not only did you share this but you also built a website now you sell way more products and mm -hmm. you're you kind of have a, a more wide variety of things that you're doing which seems more interesting to me anyway like you not only did you uh not lose customers but you actually built something where it seems like it's more fun to work on there's more going on there's yeah. more things that you're selling it's like you you see it seems like you got more of what you wanted by uh giving other people what they wanted and you you put it on the head and and and, and me giving this information away it was so um, liberating for me. I enjoy it. I love sharing information. I love educating people. Um, and that was the thing that actually happened with me with another social media um, channel. They reached out to me and it said, hey, Debbie, we, we've been watching you on YouTube because that's where I mostly was. And they said, we want you to, to help us. And I don't know if I can say, can I tell you who the other social media? Could yeah, be? yeah, sure. Well, it was TikTok. TikTok reached out to me. And it said, um, we are building our channel. I didn't even know who TikTok was, but they reached out to me and said, we're building our channel because I guess around that time it was more of a um, lip syncing and, you know, fun type of silly type of channel. Right. But they yeah. wanted to bring in education. They, they wanted, so they started looking at influencers that they felt could help the channel grow. Well, I was one of them and I'm excited now to say that I was a part of that. Um, and so they reached out to me they said they, we've been watching you on YouTube. We love the things that you're sharing. You're about education. Um, and, and we see how the people are following you. We'd like for you to come on board with us on TikTok. And originally I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I can't afford to do any more channels because I was handling my Instagram. I was handling my Facebook and I had YouTube. I was like, yeah. And at the time there was another, um, I can't think of, it was another channel that my team was trying to get me to sign up for. And I said, 
guys, I can't, I can't put all these videos out. I'm one person. I'm running a business. I'm taking care of you guys. I have a family at home, but then I decided that I would do it. And, and I think it was one of the best things because on TikTok, I actually, I got about maybe seven and eight million views. One, I have a million, over a million followers that continue every day. And I enjoy putting out this education there. I try to keep them under 60 seconds, but this is real information that when I read the comments, people are saying how I've helped them. Their health has improved. They're, they're no longer taking this type of medication. They've lost 10 pounds. Um, their son is healthier now. And all of this is so, I just, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm helping this. I'm helping these many people with their health. So it allows me to continue on my journey to get better in what I'm doing and to continue to save lives because I feel that's what it is at the end of the day, whether I'm helping you. Cause you see, if I can help you grow your hair back, remember I said hair loss causes problems, depression, um, low self-esteem. So if I can build that and help you transition into a better person, I've succeeded there. And then if I can still help you with your health, now your gut is well, now your kidneys is flushed out. Now you're no longer taking high blood pressure medicine. So I've, I'm helping all the way around and it's just an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, as you said, uh, you, you have over a million followers on TikTok. Um, you were kind of apprehensive of doing it in the first place. Um, I, I, the growth on TikTok is pretty amazing. Um, uh, what a lot of people I think don't realize is TikTok is the easiest platform to grow organically on. Um, and you know, the fact that you have over a million followers and have been doing it for way less time than YouTube. Yes. Uh, and on YouTube, you have uh, over 400,000, still a lot, but, um, this is kind of the, the power of TikTok. And uh, like I, you clearly post a lot on here. And I, I think your type of content also does well on TikTok because you can kind of just like share some brief, useful mm -hmm. information like, uh, you know, gut healing wellness shot, mm -hmm. uh, test your hair for nutritional deficiencies. Like there, there's some like kind of quick tips that you yeah. can just sort of put out there. So um, I, I invite anybody who feels like, oh, maybe I could do something like that for my channel. Like maybe I could break things down and uh, just take very brief but useful information and put it out there. Uh, do it, like post on TikTok. And you can always cross post to YouTube Shorts as well. I see you also use YouTube mm -hmm. Shorts. Yes. Um, and I, d I did want to ask you about your experience with YouTube Shorts because um, some people I talk to, they don't really like them. They've tried it. They feel like the, the traffic from the shorts doesn't translate to the rest of their channel. Um, how have shorts been for you? Well, when shorts first started, um, what YouTube, because they had sent me an email. I have a creator team that works with me in YouTube. And, you know, they, would, they were like, hey, Debbie, you might be interested in doing the shorts, but uh, there's no compensation. You, you, there's no money in it for you. And I was like, really? Well, okay. You know, I just thought it was just another platform. See, I guess money is, of course, you know, because I, I, I with YouTube, with my YouTube videos, I am connected with Google AdSense. So every month, Google sends me a check for all the views that I get. Um, and when they were like, yeah, we haven't worked out yet. They just recently started where you can get like a bonus in, from shorts when you do a, over a certain amount. But in the beginning, shorts wasn't, there was no compensation for it. And I still decided to do it because I just feel if whatever avenue it allows me to share with people ways to help their health and their mental health, then I'm going to do it. And I think it's even more now since we've experienced the pandemic, because since the pandemic, we have more mental health issues out there than anything. Everyone's mental health was affected from, from the two years of us being locked up in our own homes. And I just feel now, right now, I have a job to do. I have, there is something I need to do to help everyone, as many people as I can, understand that the mental health issues that they're going through, we can work through this and, and that there's some support out there. So using the shorts was just another avenue, another channel, another way for me to get people to know that you're not alone and there are things that you might be dealing with mentally and physically, but here's a quick solution. Um, you know, always being that problem solver. So I love the shorts, it, you know, most of it is, it's a, it's a lot of times it's when I make a video, my team will transfer that video into a TikTok and, and into a short. So it's a, 
and into an Instagram or into a reel. So they'll take one video and, and make it into three different things, which is great. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like the, the fact that you're so big on all of these diff different platforms, uh, clearly your team knows how to like cut up your content and kind of spread it around. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause you, you have a big Instagram and Facebook following as well. Um, like, do you have any specific advice for growing on uh, Instagram in particular? Cause TikTok, you know, it seems relatively simple. You just kind of post like Instagram. Was that more complicated? Cause I've heard that Instagram is the hardest to grow organically. Instagram, Instagram is the hardest because they keep changing the algorithm. As soon as I think I figured out that algorithm, they've changed it again. It's like, I can't keep up with you. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, Instagram. And I started Instagram around the same time. So I think I've been on Instagram for, I'm going to say eight or nine years, but it just, you know, it wasn't, and I couldn't figure out what I paid for different uh, programs and courses to teach me how to build into my Instagram. And I just learned, I just felt, you know what, I'm just going to let this to grow organically. I had to start looking at the comments to see what is the need. Everything always goes back to filling that need. And, and from that need, that's the kind of content that I started giving. Um, you said that TikTok is pretty easy and I'm going to say in some ways I disagree because I have so many people that's like, I can't grow my TikTok for nothing in the wall. Now, yeah, you could get people to follow you, but when you want to get into the hundred thousands, that's a totally different beast. So it's mm -hmm. easy, but then it's not easy. Uh, and Instagram, it's the algorithm. It's just, you know, at one point in time, I thought I figured it out with the, the hashtags, then they changed it with the hashtags. So you just have to keep following what they're, what, what they're doing. And then you got to be on top of it. It's just the same with like Google, you'll figure things out in Google and then Google will change the algorithm. Uh, Facebook, what, as soon as you think you got it, you, you, you know, I got this with Facebook. Now they've changed it. And it's like, oh, are you kidding me? You know, cause at one point <laughs> in time in Facebook, I was, my, my channel was growing and growing. And then Facebook announced some changes. And then everyone saw that their channels just wasn't doing well. And I said, I think I'm going to get off of this Facebook, but I didn't, I stayed. So you just got to keep following with the trends and, and staying on top of it. But yes, it could be a little exa or exhausting and sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. So what I want to suggest to anyone, when it seems like it's a little overwhelming, then just fall back for a moment, take a deep breath, walk away from it for a day, a week or whatever. You know, because when we get overwhelmed, that's when it starts to mess with our mental and, and we need this mental to stay strong and, and vibrant and be able to think clearly. So sometimes when you get overwhelmed and that's what I do and my, because I, I, I do most of my own content, um, well, I do all of my content, but sometimes I just got to get away. I got to like, guys, I'm going to take the day off today and I'll be back on Monday because I can't think, I can't figure out what my next video should be. I don't know what I should do next. So you have to just sit back. You got to walk away from it for a while and take a breather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is hugely important. And weirdly, I think it can be difficult to recognize when that is happening within yourself. Um, like, uh, clearly you're able to understand when that is happening, but I know at least for me, like, um, so I ran my YouTube channel full time for most of my twenties and I actually, I feel like a lot of times I kind of did the opposite where if I felt overwhelmed, I would almost want to double down mm -hmm. and like, oh, well, I have so much stuff to do and I, nothing makes sense to me. So I guess I just need to work more. Um, and in the long run, that really screwed me up. Yeah. Uh, it ended up making me less productive overall. Like I had to take a super long break in order to recover. I'm still not really posting <laughs> regularly to my channel. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if you could kind of give some advice and some clarity on like how to recognize when you, you're going too far, like you're obsessing too much. Uh, you aren't really in the headspace to make good decisions. Like, how do you know when to back up and take a little breather so that you can actually see things clearly and make good decisions? Well, when you have a lot of, of um, a lot of things on your plate. So here's what I do, because I used to be that person. I had five and 10 things that I needed to do. And I found out at the end of the day, I didn't get any of it done. I had to literally first write down what needs to be done for the day. This is, this is what I say to help you so that you don't get overwhelmed. You write down the things that need to be done. 
And the most important things do that first. Don't try to do it all. If you can accomplish one of the things on your list in the day, you have successfully accomplished something. That is a way mm -hmm. so that you don't become overwhelmed because if you know you have so many things to do and you're trying to do it all, and usually when we try to, try to do it all, we get nothing done. But if you're writing it down, at least for me, I'm old school. So I, I got to write it down. I got to look at it and go, okay, I got this to do that. As I get it done, I cross it off my list. And that gives me so much power. I feel it's like, oh my goodness, I finished it. It might've been something really simple or it might've been something really difficult, but write it down. I, paper and pen is your friend. And that has been I, to the point where I have sticky notes. I'll have sticky notes all over the place because when you get to, when you're, you're running your channel and you're running your business and you have a lot of things to do, you get certain things will come in the day to throw off some of the things that you have to do. So if you got sticky notes, that's going to remind you. But if you got your good old fashioned pen and paper and you, you wrote, already wrote down and I do this in the beginning of the morning, actually, when I wake up in the morning and I go take my shower, it's when I'm in the shower, I'm like, oh, okay, what I got to do today. And then I got a pen and paper right outside that shower. As soon as I come out of the shower, it's like, da, 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 da. Cause that's cause when I'm in the shower, that's when the brain opens up for me. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that's a good idea idea. Oh, that's a great video content. So once I get out of the shower, I got the pen and paper and I'll start writing it down. I'll take it down to my office. And as I am accomplishing these things, I'm getting it crossed off. That keeps me from getting overwhelmed. That's it. It sounds like maybe some people go, that's it. That sounds easy, but yeah, it really is pen and paper and write it down. And even if when you write it down and if out of everything you had on that paper, if only one thing got done that day, at the end of the day, you should still feel good because you got something done. And that's mm -hmm. how it works for me so that I'm not overwhelmed. So that is my advice to anyone when you're feeling overwhelmed, just if you've accomplished a little bit of whatever you were doing, you've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. For real. And that that is something that I've had to work on accepting over the years. Um, I think... We all have to-do lists every day, whether it's a physical list, which is always very helpful, or just kind of a mental list mm -hmm. of like, ah, there's things I need to do. Wouldn't it be nice if I did X, Y, and Z today? Um, yeah, usually life is more complicated than, you know, the kind of idealized list that you have in your head or on paper. Things come up, your house gets dirty, you need to <laughs> clean it, and that takes hour, hours and energy. I mean, just the other day, that's exactly what I did, uh, and it took like half a day. Mm -hmm. But now my house is, is much cleaner, and it feels way better. Um, so, yeah, I got a little behind on work relative to what I wanted to do, but I still did get some work done that day, and yeah. I cleaned the house. So I, I kind of exactly. told myself that, and it uh, I feel like it's just a better way to go through life. And um, I'm, I'm noticing the more I do that, the more I'm able to kind of like wake up refreshed and be kinder to myself. Yeah. And just it's all about the long run. Like um, it's like kind of wholesome, holistic thinking. But again, you want to cultivate your mind in a way that benefits you in the long run, not just, uh, yeah, sure, maybe you could work 12 hours one day, but are you going to be able to do that the next day or the day after that? Like, how long is that going to last? Yeah. Uh, and is that going to kind of interrupt your interpersonal relationships? And if those start kind of falling apart, then you're going to start falling apart. And then, like, it just, you need to keep everything in mind. That's so, right. and wonderful it's advice. It's a domino I'm, I'm glad effect. You when you start falling apart and you don't stop, it's a domino effect. It just will continue on. And then you'll know, you don't know how to fix it. So, before it gets to the point of that, just take your moments, accomplish one thing for the day. You know, even if honestly in the day it's like, okay, I need to take a shower. And then you finally took the shower. You've accomplished something for the day. So, <laughs> Just take a day at a time. That saying is real. One day at a time. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. For real. And so we're, we're kind of getting towards the end here. And this is around the time when I like to ask, um, like, a, a an important piece of advice. So in your case, uh, it's clear to me that you've been able to kind of roll with everything smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, Most of your growth has been organic. Uh, you haven't really, like, obviously you have a plan, but it, it always seems like your plan is aligned with what you really want to be doing. And that kind of makes it easier to make happen. So uh, do you have any advice for somebody um, who maybe they don't 
like they want to start a channel or they want to start a business um but they're having trouble kind of connecting with what feels right um maybe they aren't quite connected to themselves or they just something like it, nothing has clicked yet like what, what what advice do you have for somebody there who's kind of frustrated and feels like uh things are more confusing than maybe they seem like they were for you I would think, and I actually have this question. I have this question asked to me, and I, I, I say this a lot when someone, they, they want to do something, but they don't know what. I always say that you can, and again, it goes back to pen and paper, write down the things that you're passionate about, write it down, and then look at it. And because you're like, I want to start a channel, but I don't know what I want to do. I, I want to do something. So you got to dig deep into yourself to find out your passions. And then the things that you're good at, we're all good at something. There's some people that go, I'm not good at nothing. Nope, I'm sorry. Everyone is. Everyone has a gift. And you might not know what that gift is yet, but in order for you to find the gift, I can't find it for you. You got to dig within yourself. So what I've done, and it has helped where you just write down the things that you love or the things that you are passionate about. And then as you look at this list and you can see what I call the low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit is basically something you can grab right now. It's, 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 you know, it's there to touch. And out of that list, which one of these things on your list is your low hanging fruit? It means you could start it today. You got this, you, you know how to, to do that. There's something on that list that's your low hanging fruit. That's where you start. And then from there, that will open the door to many other things. Like, so for me, I started, you know, as a hairstylist a hundred years ago, and that led me into trichology. It led me into, um, from there, becoming a nutritionist. It led me into a whole holistic practitioner. Now I'm studying functional medicine. So it's that low-hanging fruit that that's all you need. It's just the low-hanging fruit. And most of the time, if we write it on paper, because see, as long as we keep it up here in our head, we may not never do anything with it. And this is, in a, at least in my experience. But when we write it, we see it, it's physical now. Now we have a, a real idea from something that we wrote on paper. Take the one that's the low hanging fruit and start moving from that point. So that's a great way to start, whether it's a business or a channel. See what's your low hanging fruit, what you're good at, what's your gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well put. Uh, I like the low hanging fruit idea because I think getting started is usually the most important point. Uh, it's like the, the highest resistance point. Um, and if you can get started, then things kind of start opening up. And maybe it's not clear before you get started how you, all the twists and turns are going to look. Mm -hmm. But once you kind of get your foot through the door, um, things kind of, they just start happening. You meet somebody new, you uh, learn mm -hmm. something new, and that leads you to something else. And it's, you know, um, I... I think if you like read the biography of uh, some successful person, it's like they went to this college and then wrote this book and then this happened. And right. it kind of feels very like, I don't, I don't know, like obvious, like everything was obvious for them, mm -hmm. but it, that's not how it works ever. It's always yeah. like uh, kind of one step at a time. One thing leads to another. And yeah, maybe you have like a general plan, but um, I think most of the time, you know, plans are like a good starting point but they often have to evolve in, yes. uh, in response to changing circumstances. And so, yeah, uh, low hanging fruit, just get started. I love it. Yeah. I, I think that's really important and powerful stuff. And yeah, so at this point, we're, we're kind of at the end here. So Debbie, why don't you tell people where they can find you and pitch all your okay. awesome stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Well, uh, it was a pleasure. Tell everybody. Yeah. Uh, it was a pleasure mm -hmm. working, talking with you today. For those who are interested in wanting to know more about me, um, you can find me, even if you just Google X Debbie, all of my information and social media channels will pop up. My website is AxDebbieAboutHair.com. My product site, which I developed, so this is not any kind of turnkey product where I bought some else's product and put my name on it. I literally worked with a chemist and to determine every ingredient in there because I knew that I didn't want chemicals. I knew, I knew that I needed something that was feeding the body the nutrients, so my Product line is hairandscalpmeds.com. You can find all my products there. I even have a product that I created years ago called Lavenderm. That's a natural mosquito repellent. And I made that because my house is filled with woods and we always want to be out there. But the mosquitoes are huge because 
I'm by a creek. And so I don't like DEET and all the chemical products. So I went and formulated one that's all natural. And when I tell you it's amazing, we go camping for four and five days in the woods with shorts on and sleeveless and not a mosquito bite. So um, you can find all my products there from my hair care line. I'm we're about to develop a skin care line. Um, everything you want to find out about me is there. I also do consultations. I do a service where I do a hair mineral analysis where your hair has the strands of your hair tells the story of your life. It will show your deficiencies. It will show your nutritional problems. And all of your deficiencies are usually where it all begins. So there's so many th different things that I do for health. And you'll find all of my information and my consultation information there. There you go. Debbie Williams, everybody, go check out her cool stuff. And uh, with that, you know, make sure to like and subscribe whatever platform you are on. And uh, that way I can see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me, Debbie. Thank you.